paglipas ng panahon, may mga bagay na naiiwan, tahimik at pawang walang kahulugan. Ngunit bawat bagay ay may nilalaman, may kwento, may kahulugan. Sino ang umupo dito? Nagsulat at nagsimula ng himagsikan. Ano ang mga lihim na nakatala sa kanyang liham? Ano ang kanyang naisip, naramdaman? Ang kasaysayan ay ang makahulugang pagtala ng buhay. Tulad ng karanasan, patuloy ang ating pagmulat sa tunay, sa tapat. Ngunit paano natin mababasa ang buhay na nakalipas? Ano ang kanyang kahulugan? Ito ang pangunahing tungkulin ng Pambansang Komisyong Pangkasaysayan o National Historical Commission of the Philippines. Ang kasaysayan ay unang nabubuhay sa isip ng tao at ang pagtala nito gamit ang salita ay ang bumubuo ng mga kwento ng ating bansa. Yung mga karaniwang alam na natin sa history, pag binabalikan natin dito sa research, nalalaman namin, nakakadiscover kami ng mga bagong ebidensya na nagpapatunay na yung matagal na nating alam ay mali pala kung babalikan, no? yung mga especially mga primary sources. It, it makes history exciting din. May mga controversies here and there. Isang may away. <laughs> uh, nakikita mo kung paano nakipaglaban yung mga ninuno natin. No? Kung titignan mo, lahat pala ng mga nangyari, magmula pa noon si Hermano Pule, mga Basi Revolts, lahat ito, iisa lang pala yung pinupunto nila eh. Yung pagmamahal sa bayan. Sa pamamagitan ng pagsasanin at pananaliksik, ang mga natala ay hindi na mistulang salita. Ito ay nabibigyang buhay. Upang mabuo ang kwento ng ating bansa, kailangan natin ang dalawang simpleng tanong. Ano at saan? Ano ang nangyari at saan ginanap? Sa pagtala ng mga makasaysayang lugar sa bansa, ang pirapirasong alaala ay nabibigyang kahalagahan at nagsisilbing kwentong kayamanan. Nagsimula lahat noong 1933. Sa panukalang bilang 451, binuo ang Philippine Historical Research and Markers Committee, o PHRMC. Sinikap ng pamahalaan na matuklasan at makilala ang mga makasaysayang lugar bago ito mawala at makalimutan. Sa mga sumunod na dekada, lumawak ang katungkulan ng komite. Nagbago ang kanyang pangalan at nadagdagan ang kanyang tungkulin. Sabay nito ang pagbuo ng mga komisyon na inatasang ipagdiwang ang mga sentenaryo ng mga pabansang bayani. Pinag-isa ang mga komisyon sa komite at sa mga sumunod na taon na buo ang NHI o National Historical Institute. Mula rito, nabuo ang kasalukuyang NHCP sa pamamagitan ng Republic Act 10086 ng taong 2010. Kahoy at bato, marmol at bakal. Ang kasaysayan ay natutuklasan din sa mga labi ng panahon. Ano ang kanilang mga kwento? Ano ang kanilang mga lihim? Kasi yung historical items natin, pareho lang sila ng iba pang mga material things. So, pinupuo din sila ng elements at compounds, mga chemicals din sila, na vulnerable to environment, na apektuhan ng ng light, ng heat, ng humidity. Sa ating history, marami tayong mga pagkakataon na bumagsak ang, uh, bumagsak ang bayan, bumagsak ang ekonomiya. Marami tayong matututunan. So, sa pamagitan din ng pag-preserve ng ating items, nagsisilbi kasi silang paalala sa atin ng ating kasaysayan na uh, magiging susi sa ating pagkakalaya sa ating mga previous na mga pagkakamali. Bilang mga pamana ng panahon, ang pagsasaayos ng mga bahay, gusalit simbahan, ay pagpapatunay sa diwa ng ating kultura. Ang mga kwento ay nabubuhay muli at siyang nasisilayan. Kasaysayan ay kwentong tuluyang dumadaloy, sabay sa panahon, at tuluyan ring yumayaman tulad ng pagkatao.
pagkukuli ng NHCP na ipagdiwang at ihayag ang ating mga natuklasan dahil karapatan ng bawat Pilipino na makibahagi sa yaman ng ating kasaysayan. Masasabing ang pagkatao ay masusukat ng kanyang paninindigan, malilikom sa kanyang pinanigan. Ito ba'y sa tapat, makasarili ba o makabayan? Sa buhay ng bayani, nagiging malinaw ang maari nating itugon. Na ang buhay na makahulugan ay buhay na makabuluhan. Na ang pagkatao ang tunay na kayamanan. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first uh, webinar for the year brought to you by the National Historical Commission of the Philippines and Museo El Deposito. Pagdaloy, a webinar on watersheds and dams in the Philippines. So to officially begin our webinar for this afternoon, may I call on the officer in charge of the office of the Deputy Executive Director of the Programs and Projects of the NHGP, Mr. Alvin Alsi. Thank you, Kai. Hello, I hope everyone can hear me clearly, Kai. No, uh, maginang hapon po. Okay. Um, first off, I would like to thank everyone for joining us this afternoon uh, in this webinar, as mentioned by Kai. This will be the. This is the first. I am sure this will be not. The, this will not be the last. There will be more from our different museums. Uh, this one is brought to you by our Museo ng El, Museo El Deposito. So before I begin, let me thank all our uh, invited speakers for today. Uh, Engineer Susan Abano, the chief of the Policy and Program Division from the National Water Resources Board. We'll also be joined by Engineer Conrado Sison Jr. He's the manager of the dam management department of the National Power Corporation. And of course, Mr. Noel Umali, also manager of the watershed management department of the National Power Corporation. Ma'am and sirs, thank you very much for uh, giving us your time. Uh, they, you will be introduced uh, later on by our, uh, our MC. Also, I'd like to thank C. Janelle, our curator, no? uh, shrine curator of the Museo del Deposito, and of course, all our Facebook viewers and all our technical staff who, who work to make this possible. No? Um, as I mentioned, po, this seminar is brought to you by El Museo ng El Deposito. Uh, it's just unfortunate that now um, all of our museums as required by the IATF rules are closed. No? Uh, kasi nga, bawal ang public gathering. We, we have to close some of our public places. Uh, but if we open up sometime soon, hopefully you'll be able to find time na bisitahin po ang Museo El Deposito. 
uh, very much related po sa topic natin ngayon kasi ang pag-uusapan ay uh, mga uh, watersheds and dams. Uh, hindi um, nung Marso po no before well after the after the lockdown no nagsimula tayo middle of March last year nung pinasara na po sinarado na ng mga mga public uh, places no. Uh, we are supposed to open another portion ng El Deposito na sayang at di natin nakita pero ito po I hopefully when the time when the right time comes mabuksan po natin. Ito po yung sa ilalim ng uh, El Deposito. Ito po yung mga uh, water cisterns, mga imbaka ng tubig na bahagi po ng uh, kasaysayan ng paano tayo nagkaroon ng malinis na tubig dito sa ating bayan. No? Kaya po napapanahon din yung naginawang topic ng ating mga kasamahan sa Museo ng El Deposito. Uh, nakatuon po ito sa paano ba magsusupply ng malinis na tubig sa ating mga kabahayan. No? Ayan po ang uh, tema at malamang ipag-uusapan natin ng mahaba-haba. Mahaba po kasi ang kasaysayan ng mga dams at mga watersheds. No? Uh, as early as the American period, may mga tinayo ng dams. No? Pero yun nga po, before that, during the Spanish period, if you will visit the Museo ng El Deposit, we'll tell you the story of how, um, how we, we tried to come up with a potable source of water. Naging challenge din po kasi ito. Eh, no? Similarly, ngayon may pandemya tayo. Actually, naging sagot din ito kaya pinilit po ng ating mga ninuno na magkaroon tayo ng malinis na water supply. Uh, lahat, sa buong sa, sa especially in Manila no para uh, maiwasan po yung pandemya ding nangyayari noong panahon na yon so ang webinar po natin ay magfo-focus dito mga water resources sa Pilipinas gaano kahalaga ang mga water resources nito hindi lamang po sa inumin bagi po sa source of energy kaya po na rin ating mga kasama sa Napocor no to tell us ano ba hindi lang kasi ito yung source hindi lang ito yung product eh. hindi lang tubig kuryente at marami pang ibang irrigation of course so ay All our experts will probably talk about that and uh, of course, hopefully hoping also that our, our audience will be able to ask many questions about this. Uh, ang isa pa pong maganda nating maanrito ma ay uh, maibigay, no? maibigay natin sa mga manonood natin gaano kahalaga uh, na napanatilihin natin ang mga malilinis na water sources na ito. So with that, I would like again to thank everyone, each and every one of you for joining us this afternoon. And we hope to have a very fruitful afternoon, a very productive afternoon, and a learning experience for everyone. So Kai, thank you very much and to all our uh, invited speakers for today. Good afternoon. Thank you, Sir Alvin, for the wonderful message. So let me introduce to you our three speakers for this afternoon. Our first speaker is a civil engineer by profession. She graduated from the University of Santo Tomas with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering in 1981. She also finished her Master of Science in Hydrology from the National University in Ireland in 1988. She had been in the National Water Resources Board for 37 years. She currently holds the position as the Division Chief of the Policy and Program Division. Uh, let us all welcome Engineer Susan Abano. Hi ma'am, good afternoon. Good afternoon po. So, uh, thank our you for second the speaker, okay. yeah. Our second speaker is the Department Manager of the Dams Management Department. He is a graduate of civil engineering at St. Louis University, class of 1984, and took up Master of Business Administration at the National College of Business and Arts, class of 2002. Let us all welcome Engineer Conrado G. Season. Good afternoon, Sir John. Our last speaker is the manager of the Watershed Management Department of the National Power Corporation, took up his Bachelor of Science in Forestry at the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, Laguna. He also got his master's degree in business administration in Colegio de San Juan de la Pran and took up diploma course on natural resources that administration in environmental management at University of Copenhagen, Denmark. Let us all welcome Mr. Emmanuel A. Umali. Good afternoon, sir. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. So, let us uh, begin our fruitful discussion of water supply resources and uh, watershed and dams. 
Uh, ladies first. Engineer Susan, you may begin. So good afternoon po. Okay. So Okay po ba yung present yung nakikita na po yung aking presentation? Yes ma'am. Clear. Okay. So yeah. So good afternoon po ulit sa ating mga manonood. Okay. So so ang aking pong topic is about the Philippines water resources situation and regulation. So the outline of my presentation would be about the National Water Resources Board, our mandate, vision, mission, and functions, uh, water resources situation in the Philippines, and some of the projects and programs that the NWRB uh, is doing. Okay. So the NWRB is the government agency that is responsible for all the water resources in the Philippines. It coordinates and regulates all water-related activities in the country that has impact on the physical environment and the economy. So our vision is sustainable water for a healthy nation. And our mission is to allocate sufficient water for optimal beneficial use, to ensure access to safe water supply and adequate sanitation services, and to preserve flow regimes for ecological integrity. So our first major function is the policy formulation and coordination. So the NWRB formulate plans and policies within the framework of the integrated water resources management. Some of our plans include uh, Philippine IW, IWRM plan framework. We have also IWRB, IWRM plan in Pampanga River Basin and our groundwater management plan in water constraint areas. And we formulate policies. Uh, some of the policies that we, uh, we had are, are groundwater allocation for Metro Manila and surrounding areas, groundwater allocation for Metro Cebu, and granting of water rights over surface water for hydropower projects requiring more than 80% dependable flow. And we're using the water code of the Philippines that was uh, um, created in 1976, but we are into proposing amendments to this 1976 water code. So our second function is resource regulation. So we issue water permit. We issue water permit to all water users using uh, water for power, agriculture, domestic and municipal, industry, tourism, environment, fisheries. Whether it's uh, the water will be sourced from the groundwater or it will be sourced from the surface water. So the NWRB allocates water and then issues water permit. And the NWRB is a quasi-judicial body, so we resolve water use conflict. We also monitor the compliance of conditions of water permit or conditional water permit and other policies. Our third, our third function is economic regulation, okay? We grant certificate of public convenience. Ito po yung uh, right to sell water. So we regulate the private water service providers like the uh, LGU-run water utilities, the rural water works associations, water cooperatives, private water utilities like Balibago, uh, Prime Water, bulk water suppliers, and water peddlers. Okay. So we protect the consumers and safeguards the economic viability of water utilities. So we see to it that the consumer will not pay uh, more than the set tariff, okay? And then the utility service provider will not charge so much uh, tariff uh, only uh, with the peg uh, value of 12% return of investment, okay? So we set water tariffs of private water providers. And we also monitor compliance of laws and policies, and then we impose sanctions on violators. Okay. So what are we managing? We're managing the water resources. So what is the situation in the Philippines? We have a land area of around 300,000 square kilometers with an annual average rainfall of 2,400 millimeters. The Philippines has 421 principal river basins 18 major river basins, 79 lakes, and the coastal basin coastal waters, 
is uh, equal to 266,000 square kilometers. And the Philippines is divided into 12 water resources regions. Um, we call it water resources region. This is regions. This is very different from the administrative, re, uh, administrative region because it, um, it is divided into hydrological boundaries. For the water resources, we have the rainfall uh, with an average uh, 2,400 millimeters per year. It goes to the surface water and groundwater. It goes into the 421 principal rivers, 79 lakes, and the surface water, uh, the potential uh, available water for surface water is around 126 billion cubic meter. And for the groundwater, we have around 20 billion cubic meter with the total water resources of 146 billion cubic meter, okay? So as a regulatory body, so all these water users, they go to NWRB and apply for water permit. So based from the distribution of non-consumptive use as of November, 2020, um, the use of power is around 60.24% uh, users, okay? In terms of uh, percentage users, okay? For the municipal, 3.3%, industrial, 4.5%, irrigation, 30%, fisheries, 0.2%, power, 60%, recreation, 0.12%, livestock, uh, it's almost negligible. And uh, for power generation, we say non-consumptive because uh, the, the power is being generated to generate power and then it goes back to the river, okay? So, Anybody can still use uh, the, the water, okay? Next, uh, distribution of consumptive use. If you will see the pie diagram, irrigation has the biggest, is the biggest user of water with around 77% based from our database, okay? So uh, uh, next is industrial, uh, commercial, uh, municipal, uh, fisheries, recreation, and others. So for the water potential and water demand by region, uh, this has not been updated, okay? So sorry for this one, but as you can see, the red ones, regions three and four and region seven, uh, the total water demand has already exceeded the water potential. That is why the NWRB, uh, there, we are doing uh, some research and programs and projects so that we can uh, we can sustain uh, the, uh, the water, uh, deficit water in all these regions. So we're using the uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, uh, we're adopting this as a 2030 agenda for sustainable development, okay? And for the water sector, goal six of that uh, SDG, ensure access to water and sanitation for all and under 6.5 water resources management, 6.5.1, it says there the, to implement integrated water resources management at all levels, including through transboundary cooperation as appropriate, and to use NWRB as an indicator of ensuring availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. And it mentioned about the NWRB taking the lead in the assessment of IWRM implement, implementation in the Philippines. Okay. So one of the issues for water resources is uh, there are already uh, nine water stressed areas identified in 1999 by the JICA study for water resources in the Philippines. These are Metro Cebu, Bacolod City, Iloilo, Davao City, Cagayan de Oro, Zamboanga, Metro Manila, Baguio, Angeles City, probably because of urbanization, a rapid growth of population and other, uh, other uh, over extraction of groundwater and so on and so forth, okay? But uh, these nine critical areas, we already conducted some assessments, some projects to assess the available water for these areas, okay? So we did a groundwater management plan for all these areas to establish a systematic and science-based management strategies, particularly on groundwater allocation, as well as provide information for prioritizing aquifers because most of these areas, they get their water from the aquifer. 
And then we prepare groundwater vulnerability assessment maps, which indicate which areas are vulnerable to pollution in terms of groundwater pollution. And we design groundwater monitoring network and location of groundwater monitoring wells to measure the, the aquifer, to know the condition of the aquifer in terms of water quality and in terms of water level. And then we develop a groundwater management plan to be used by, uh, by uh, decision makers, even the NWRB for regulating the available water resources in those areas. So we conducted, as I have said, in the nine water uh, stressed areas. So we already have uh, the, uh, the groundwater management plan, which could be used uh, for regulating the water resources. Okay. So uh, we started only in 2016 and we just finished uh, most of them in 20, 2019. And we're starting to conduct a water, groundwater management plan for other areas which we consider will run out of water in the future, okay? But uh, the, the Department of Budget and Management is only giving us limited budget to conduct one or two areas in a year. So imagine if we have the whole Philippines and we already um, uh, investigated that there are more than uh, water constrained areas in the Philippines. So it will be very difficult for NWRB to budget our resources. Okay. And we also conduct comprehensive water resources assessment for major river basins. Uh, we have 18 major river basins. And this is a long-term program of NWRB to formulate scientific report of the available water, considering changes and trends in the use of water resources, such as climate change and increasing development. Um, since you are giving also water permit for surface water, we need to know the available water in all those uh, water uh, river system and even those um, big rivers in the Philippines. And we determine knowledge on the current water resources situation. And we, we have the updated water availability and quality situation considering population and development. And these results are used as a basis for planning, for regulation, and project implementation in the future. Okay. So the major river basins in the Philippines, we have Abra, Cagayan, Abulog, Agno, Pampanga, Pasig Laguna, Bicol, Panayl, Halaur, Ilog Halib. Hilabangan, Agusan, Tagoloan, Cagayan de Oro, Tagum Libuganon, Davao, Buayan, Agos, Mindanao, Lawag, and Amnay Patri. Okay. So we conducted, uh, we started also in 20, 2016 and we have already conducted around five major river basins we have, which we have studied uh, the available water in all those rivers in, in the river basins. Okay. So we talk about the Angat Reservoir, okay, since uh, uh, one of the topics here is dam. So reservoir management for Angat Reservoir. Angat, res Angat Dam is a multi-purpose dam being used for irrigation to 27,000 27, hectares of farmlands in Bulacan and Pampanga provinces. It's a flood control to Bulacan province. It generates power for Luzon power grid and provide water supply to Metro Manila with 15 million population. So the reservoir uh, are subject to regulation by the NWRB in accordance with Article 62 of the Water Code of the Philippines or the Presidential Decree Number 1067. And all reservoir operations shall be subject to rules and regulations issued by the board. So the NWRB monitors the operation and regulates the utilization of water and got through a technical working group composed of the National Power Corporation, NIA, MWSS, PAGASA, and, and NWRB as a chair. So the NWRB regulates the Angat Reservoir through water allocation based on the approved reservoir operation rule curve. So this is the operation rule curve. Uh, we monitor the, uh, the rule curve. So we you see the red ones and the, the green one. The red one is in 2019 and the uh, the green one is 2021. So uh, it, it shows that the water level leads, reached the minimum of 157 in July 13 of 2010 and 157.97 in June 28 of 2021. Okay. 
So we're now into uh, 2020, 2021, I'm sorry, 20, 2020 for the lowest in green. And we have the new uh, elevation with the elevation of 213.03 at the beginning of the year as of January 25, 2021. And for the La Mesa Dam, 79.62 meters and Ipo Dam, 100.62 meters, okay? So uh, Angat Reservoir goes to uh, the Angat Powerhouse and it goes to the MWSS through the Ipo Dam and the La Mesa Reservoir. And it goes to the Bustos Dam to be used for the Angat Maasin River Irrigation System. So the utilization of water from Angat, uh, we provide NIA with 36 CMS or for irrigation of 27,000 hectares and 46 CMS for MWSS for Metro Manila water supply and for NPC power generation of 246 megawatts and reduce the flooding to downstream towns and villages. Okay, so the rules on water releases we have, if we have sufficient water supply at 180 meters, we give a uh, water supply to irrigation and domestic. But if it goes down to 180, there would be a, a projected deficit in the available water supply after considering climate condition, hydrological inputs and water elevation. So the water allocation for both domestic and irrigation will be reduced and the water level below 180 meters, the domestic water supply is prioritized follow, followed by irrigation. So some of the farmers, they, um, they prolong their, uh, their planting season uh, during this uh, condition, okay? So the water level above the normal high water level or the flood control zone, all water releases shall be governed by the flood operation rules and the NPC shall manage the releases to ensure dump uh, integrity. So the allocation of domestic irrigation and power gener generation shall be approved by the NWRB board upon recommendation of Pangat PWG members. Okay. So the PAGASA provide climate forecast. Uh, uh, the NPC, the status of dam and reservoir for water supply requirement, it's the MWSS. Irrigation requirement coming from NIA. Power requirement coming from the uh, Angat Hydroelectric Corporation, and then we do the reservoir yield optimization, and then we discuss the result to uh, of the simulation and agree on the water allocation, and then the board of the NWRB board approves the use, uh, domestic use over uh, other uses. Okay, so this is uh, the. Uh, uh, water level for flood control, 210 and above, 210, 280, it's operating zone. So we give uh, water supply to irrigation and, and water, uh, water, water supply to MWSS and irrigation to NIA. And below 100, 180, so it's the decision of the board to reduce the water level. Okay. So this is, these are the water rights given by NWRB for ANGAT, uh, NIA, and NPC. Okay, so our response during the pandemic, so we increased the allocation of water supply in Metro Manila to sustain sustainable water. We activate deep wells to augment the backup water supply for Metro Manila. And we closely monitor the Angat Reservoir in the dam to ensure enough water supply for municipal use and irrigation because also irrigation use for agriculture is very important during the pandemic because we need, uh, we need food to sustain our energy. And we undertake monthly, weekly, and daily reporting to the DNR regarding updates on water supply. So we also, uh, as part of our um, water sustainability projects, we establish groundwater monitoring wells to determine the um, condition of the groundwater, whether it is a healthy, it's not contaminated, and whether the water level is increasing or decreasing as a basis for regulation of NWRB. So we established in the, all the nine critical areas, we, uh, we established the monitoring wells, and now we're putting some telemetry because uh, uh, in this pandemic, uh, we cannot go out to measure the water level physically. So we need to put this telemetry so that the data will be automatically uh, be transferred or 
transferred to the National Water Resources Board so we can use it for uh, regulation or for updating our data bank. Okay. So as you can see, uh, one example is for the Oton. So during the summer, the water level is very low and it, it goes up during the rainy season. So we, with this, uh, decision makers can see whether uh, there's still available water in the aquifer and whether it's recharging or not. So we're also undertaking projects for the Pampanga River Basin, which includes the Angat Dam. So we're monitoring uh, in cooperation with Pagasa, some water level and water quality stations. And for the phase two of this project, we're putting additional 22 water levels and uh, water level station and uh, gauging station in, in this Pampanga River Basin, which will be implemented by NWRB financed by COICA. We are also uh, funded by the International Atomic Energy in terms of uh, determining the recharge and the age of groundwater. So yes, there is, uh, there is uh, the groundwater has an age, so you can determine whether through the age, whether the aquifer is recharging or not through the use of this isotope technique coming from the International Atomic Energy Agency. And we also, we're also conducting the National Water Security Roadmap it's a project wherein we'll, it will address impending water crisis and ensure water security throughout the Philippines based on the recommendations on the series of sector pre-summits, FGDs, and the recently concluded National Water Summit. So the priority action will be for the governance sector, resilient sector, environment sector, urban and domestic sector, agriculture and economic sector. So the roadmap will aid us in the water security. So it will be this, the, the roadmap uh, preparation is for one year and hopefully by end of March, we have now a water security roadmap wherein uh, it will give us information on how to deal with water demand management and sustainability plan for water supply, water supply. Okay. So the last part, uh, we have gap in the institutional structure in the water sector. As you can see, there are more than 30 water-related agencies. So sometimes we have, we have duplication of functions. We have similar projects and programs, so we don't maximize the resources in terms of, in terms of money and manpower because some of our projects, we start again with data collection and then um, we start again with similar projects. So there are duplication of functions and duplication of projects and plans. Okay. So the reforms, one of the reforms in the water sex sector is, a, is, a, is executive order transforming and strengthening the NWRB into a national water management council. You, as you can see, the National Water Resources Board uh, is a very small agency with only around 150 um, staff with 100 uh, permanent position and most of the staff are uh, job orders and we are operating nationwide. So this policy reform will, will institutionalize the NWR, NWMC which will strengthen the NWRB's power with provision of additional resources and the functional integration of existing mandates and functions of various water related agencies and government units and agencies shall remain in the respective units for administrative purposes. And then we can, um, we, we can uh, sustain water and we can, uh, uh, we can strengthen the NWRB in terms of monitoring and in terms of legal mandates and regulation. So the, 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 another reform in the water sector is the creation of a water regulatory commission. This is to attain universal access to safe, adequate, sustainable, and affordable water supply and sanitation for all Filipinos that is stable, transparent, and conducive for public and private domestic and foreign investment in water supply and sanitation services and implementation of fair, just, and reasonable tariffs, rates, and charges for water supply and sanitation services. There are so many uh, water service providers, it's public, MWSS uh, regulating the Manila Water and Manilad, Lua regulating the water district, NWRB regulating the private water service providers. So they have different tariffs. They have 
different rates and charges for water supply and sanitation. And so this Water Regulatory Commission will have reasonable tariff across all these water service providers. And policy reform, this is for a long term. I don't know when this will happen, but the creation of what Department of Water will strengthen the NWRB. It will be under the whole office of the president headed by a secretary. It will address fragmentation in the water sector, harmonize all conflicting laws on conservation, development, and utilization of water resources in the country, improve governance in the water sector, existence of a body responsible for policy, direction, set, direction setting, integration of all government efforts pertaining to water, existence of a body responsible for reconciling and consolidating water-related policies, planning and programming mandates of different agencies, ensure efficient allocation of water resources across water sectors, water resources regions established, and other functions and personnel subsumed by the department, okay? So let me end my presentation with this one. Water management is a shared responsibility. Good afternoon to all. Thank you, Ma'am Susan. Um, we will be collecting questions from the uh, Facebook Live uh, later for during our open forum. We can we could answer those. And to our next speaker, Engineer John Season, uh, you may begin your presentation. So, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I will be presenting to you the dam uh, management uh, of the National Power Corporation. And uh, how can I again uh, share screen? Okay. So there you are. So the National Power Corporation uh, has its own dam management department and uh, uh, which manages five uh, major dams in Luzon. And uh, we have the other group, the Mindanao Generation Group, which manages seven uh, dams in Mindanao. So, The National Power Corporation, uh, its mandate was created under the Commonwealth Act Number no. 120 on November 3, 1936, as a non-stock government corporation with its powers and functions such as to construct, operate, and maintain power plants, auxiliary plants, dams, reservoirs, pipes, mains, transmission lines, power stations, and substations, and other works for the purpose of developing hydraulic power from any creek, river, lake, spring, waterfall, among others. And uh, when we had this uh, IPRA law under RA 9136, approved on June 8, 2001, the original mandate of uh, the National Power Corporation was somewhat uh, uh, changed. Although it remains to be a national government owned and controlled corporation, uh, its main uh, function now is to perform missionary electrification through the small power utility group and shall be responsible for providing power generation and its associated power delivery systems in areas not connected to the transmission system. And also, we still have the mandate to perform watershed rehabilitation and protection dam operations to support our generation. So based on that mandate, uh, the National Power Corporation crafted its mission and vision. The mission of NPC is committed to provide reliable power generation and its associated 
power delivery systems to ensure total electrification of missionary areas while encouraging private sector participation. So from here, it is not anymore the sole responsibility of NPC, but also private sector. Manage its watershed and dam operations to support power generation, operate and maintain the Agus and Pulangi hydroelectric power plants, and adopt innovative power technologies and business processes to respond to customer needs. And the vision of NPC is to be a world-class power corporation providing reliable and reasonably priced electricity in all missionary areas by 2025, managing sustainable watersheds and dam resources for power generation and optimizing the use of remaining power generating assets. So as I said a while ago, NPC manages 12 dams in the Philippines, five dams in Luzon and their, our department, dams management department, and seven in Mindanao under the Mindanao Generation Group. Also, the dams management conducts regular dam safety and integrity inspection to ensure the safety of the individuals downstream of the dam. And also, the integrity of the dam structure itself. So we conduct semi-annual inspections and uh, the independent dam safety review by a consultant every five years. We also conduct information and education campaign to educate the public on the operations and importance of dams. We do this on a yearly basis. And to ensure that all dams are operated safely, economically, socially acceptable and maintained for their sustained reliability, NPC performs the following. Monitoring, evaluation, and implementation of dam safety programs necessary for the safe and reliable operation of the hydropower plants, and forecasting water inflows, dam discharges, and warning operations, as well as flood mitigation due to water releases. And uh, as a background of uh, the dams power plants in Luzon, they are all operated by private companies while the non-power components are being managed by the National Power Corporation. When we say the non-power components, these are the structure compo or components installed which are not related to the power generation. These include the dam, spillway, among others. And the non-power components also include the flood forecasting and warning systems. The seven dams in Mindanao are 100% uh, operated and maintained by NPC through the Mindanao Gener Generation Group. So this is the difference uh, of the seven dams with the five dams in Luzon. In Mindanao, it is solely the Mindanao Generation Group of the National Power Corporation who operates and maintains. While in Luzon, the operators are private companies. And uh, as a reference to the previous slide, the flood forecasting and warning system function is to manage inflow outflow of water in the dam reservoir during weather disturbances. Determines the amount of water that will be needed to be spilled during instances that water level of the dam is above its normal high water level. Provides warning messages to the downstream communities during the event 
of spilling operations in order to minimize the possible effects of flood during spilling operations and the information and education campaigns to downstream communities. While the other function of dams management is of safety and reliability, we conduct dam safety risk assessment through instrumentation monitoring and regular inspection. Assessment of dams after flooding and earthquakes. Processing of hydrological, seismic, geological, geotechnical, geodetic, seepage, and sedimentation monitoring data. And also the information and education campaign. As we can see here, uh, the information and education campaign is not solely the responsibility of NPC, but in partnership with the PAGASA and the dam power plant operators. So these are the 12 dams managed and operated by NPC. We have here the Angat Dam, the Kaliraya Dam. Angat Dam is in North Sagaray, Bulacan. Kaliraya Dam in Lumban, Laguna. August 7, oh, okay. So Ambuklao Dam, uh, we uh, go first to the Luzon Dams. Ambuklao Dam in Bukod, Benguet, Binga Dam in Itogon, Benguet, and the San Roque Dam in San Manuel, Pangasinan. And the dams in Mindanao, we have the Agos 7 hydroelectric plant, Agos 6, Agos 5, Agos 4, Agos 2, Agos 1, and the Pulangi 4 hydroelectric plant, which is in Maramag, Bukidnon. So these are the exact locations of the dams uh, as uh, we saw in the previous slide. So Ambuklao, Binga, San, uh, San Roque, Angat, Caliraya, Agos 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, and Pulangi 4. So what is the current situation of dams managed by NPC? Today, so Angat Dam, which is located in Nasegaray, Bulacan, water from Angat Dam is being used as, as uh, discussed also by Engineer Abanyo uh, a while ago. We have the domestic water supply being facilitated by MWSS, water irrigation for agriculture. National Irrigation Administration, Power Generation by the Angat Hydropower Corporation. San Roque Dam, which is uh, located at San Manuel, Pangasinan, we have the water irrigation for agriculture being managed by the NIA and power generation for Luzon Grid operated by the San Roque Power Corporation. The Ambuklao Dam, which is located in Bokod Benguet, the power generation is operated by the SN Aboitis Power Benguet. Also, that of the Binga Dam. While in Kaliraya Dam, the power generation is being managed by the Kaliraya Botokan Kalayaan Power Company Limited. So, based on this, we have different uh, functions of dams. The other are only for power generation. Some are for uh, multipurpose and others are for irrigation only. And uh, that ends my presentation. Thank you.
Thank you, Sir Jong. And now let us okay. proceed to our last and the final speaker from the National Power Corporation to discuss on the function of the watershed in the Philippines, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Umali. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Kay. Uh, maraming salamat to the National Historical Commission of the Philippines uh, for inviting us this afternoon to make a presentation on the dams and watershed management function of the National Park Corporation. Um, thank you for this opportunity. Okay, allow me to begin my presentation. So this is a, a presentation on the management of watersheds under the jurisdiction of the National Park Corporation. The picture before you is a picture of the Angat Watershed uh, Reservation. And we take pride of this uh, watershed because uh, it, is still, uh, it, it still has a 90% forest cover and 50% of which is still uh, in its original state or parang virgin forest ang sinasabi natin. And also this is one biodiversity hotspot because uh, it, uh, it, it, it is home to a, to a rich biodiversity of uh, Philippine flora and fauna. In fact, meron pong sighting ng uh, Philippine eagle dito sa area. And also uh, it is considered as one strategic watershed because uh, this is the only... Uh, forested area near near Metro Manila, and it somehow serves as the lungs of the metropolis. Um, the operational capability of the power plants of the of the dams of the power plants and the dams of the National Power Corporation rests on the productive condition of the watershed. So meaning, pag maganda ho yung condition ng ating watershed, it can produce the adequate supply of water and hydro for uh, geothermal power. So we really need to protect adequately our watershed so it, it, so it can provide the water and uh, steam for power generation. Now let's, uh, let us look at the uh, some of the legal basis on why NPC is doing watershed management. As mentioned by Sir Jong earlier, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the law of uh, providing NPC uh, to undertake power generation also provides for uh, under Section N that NPC is authorized to exercise complete jurisdiction and control over watersheds su surrounding reservoirs of plants and other projects constructed by the corporation. Uh, it is during the time that NPC has the monopoly of power generation, uh, the, the national government uh, thought it twice that uh, since we are infusing um, a lot of money in in create in constructing the power facilities, it, it would be the uh, it would be best that the management of the watershed should also be given to the National Power Corporation. Now, in uh, 1987, where President Cory Aquino is uh, exercise, ex exercising both uh, executive and uh, um, legislative functions, she signed into law Executive Order Number 224, wherein uh, there were seven watersheds where NPC has been vested with its complete jurisdiction and control, including regulation. Now, in 1995, um, EO 258 was also uh, issued in order to establish and delineate the responsibilities of the NPC and the DNR over the watersheds mentioned in EO 224, as well as restore the jurisdiction of the NPC over the Angat Watershed Reservation. Now, the IPIRA also mentions that uh, the National Power Corporation will continue to do watershed management and in fact is entitled to for the availment of one fourth of one centavo per kilowatt hour uh, as in the form of an environmental charge to be used solely for watershed management. Also in um, 2007, uh, because of an issue of jurisdiction between the NPC and the DNR, both agencies uh, went to the Department of uh, Justice to resolve the case 
uh, uh, pertaining to the jurisdiction and uh, it was the resolution of the DOJ that the petitioner NPC's jurisdiction and control over watershed areas and reservoir plants or projects it constructed is, accor uh, which is accordingly uh, restored and upheld to the exclusion of here in response uh, respondent. Uh, the DNR. It also includes as part of its function the granting of permits as well as enforcing forestry laws as mandated by Executive Order Number 224. So to continue, uh, allow me to uh, discuss with you the profile of these watersheds. Uh, the, the watersheds under the National Park Corporation under Executive Order Number 224 are the following Upper Agno Watershed in, in the province of Benguet, San Roque in Pangasinan and Benguet, the Angat Watershed in Bulacan and Rizal, the Makiling Banaha Watershed in Laguna, Batangas, and Quezon, uh, the Buhi Barit Watershed in Camarines Sur, the Kaliraya Lomot Watershed in Laguna, and TV Watershed in the province of Albay. We also have co-managership arrangements with the NIA and the DNR pertaining to the Magat Watershed in Patabangan. This is uh, during the time that NPC still, ha still has ownership of these uh, power plants. So we thought it wise that there's a uh, memorandum agreement for us also to co-manage part of the watershed especially the immediate areas of the reservoirs. Also, uh, there's also an existing memorandum of agreement be between the NPC and the DNR for the Lake Lano Agus watershed and Pulangi watershed. And in this case, NP NPC still owns these power facilities. Now, in 2015, uh, we were able to craft a master plan for the uh, nine watersheds under NPC. And uh, using the Namria 2015 land cover maps, we were able to identify the three zones. That it is, this is also mandated by the DNR, wherein we have identified the strict protection zone, restoration zone, and multiple use zone areas in the watersheds. And um, as, as you can see, about uh, of, of the 495,000 hectares under NPC, 400, 140,000 is still forested. And uh, this is part of the strict protection zone wherein we, we will need to implement the strict the forest protection activities and the rest restoration zone are those areas which are open and denuded and we uh, we need to undertake a forest rehabilitation over the 69,000 hectares, while the multiple use zones, zone areas are those inhabited areas, uh, which can also be devoted into various agricultural endeavors. Now, what, uh, what is the overall objective of the watershed management? We have a four-pronged approach in managing the watersheds under NPC, and we intend to reduce the sedimentation in the reservoirs, uh, so that uh, the lifespan of the reservoir can be maintained. We would also like to improve the hydrologic regime in the area because we know that if there are forests in the area, it can induce uh, uh, the hydrologic cycle and also mitigate the, environment, the environmental impacts of power generation, as well as to ensure that there's sustainability of watershed resources. And in the end, um, our, our goal is to uh, provide the, the various resources for watershed management. Now, let's look at the vision of NPC. Our vision for watershed management is to uh, ensure that there will be healthy watershed for sustained power generation and stable by physical and social landscape. And uh, we have uh, the following goals uh, that I've already mentioned earlier. And uh, these are the strategies that we implement in, uh, in making sure that uh, we uh, develop healthy watersheds for power generation. And these are all supported with watershed database updating, research development, and acquisition of tools and equipment. Uh, I will make a detailed presentation of the strategies in, in the coming slides. Now, uh, for the various zones that we have identified, we have uh, identified uh, some of the strategies uh, in order to ensure that the, the forested areas are well protected. 
and we undertake watershed protection and law enforcement. Um, we call it kapayapaan at kaayusan sa tubig kanlungan and we also do Bantay Watershed Protection Program Task Force Operation or kabalikat sa kaunlaran sa katubig kanlungan. Because we are only 75 organic personnel in NPC, therefore we need to engage the people in the community in forest protection. And also because uh, some of our watersheds are biodiversity hotspots, we also undertake take uh, conservation and management assessment and accounting of the biodiversity in the areas that we manage. And we call it Kalinangan ng Yaman sa Tubig Kanlungan. Now for the restoration zone, we undertake a watershed rehabilitation in the open and denuded areas. And we undertake uh, deforestation, re rainforestation, agroforestry, and high value crops. And we call it Kaluntian ng Tubig Kanlungan. And we also uh, do structural erosion measures like gabions and rip wraps where these uh, strategies are needed. And for the multiple use zones, we undertake uh, IEC campaign and capability building initiatives. And we also empower the women, the youth, and the IPs in the area because uh, of the 11 watersheds, nine are uh, there are IP, uh, indigenous people in nine of these watersheds. And we also engage the people in livelihood projects because uh, most of the watersheds in the Philippines are inhabited and there are communities inside. So we need to develop a good partnership with them uh, for watershed management. Now for watershed protection, uh, we normally undertake uh, a foot patrol 24 seven uh, in order to enforce the forestry laws, rules and regulations and uh, prevent uh, illegal forest activities. Also, we have partnership with the NP, PN, NPA, the P, the Philippine Army, as well as the Philippine National Police and the local government units so that, so that we can cover more areas in the forest protection. And we also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have volunteers uh, through our Bantay Watershed Task Force as a force, force multiplier in uh, protecting the watershed against the illegal forest perpetrators. And also we employ about one forest guard per 2000 hectares for uh, uh, to do forest patrol, as well as we also do IEC uh, to be able to inform the people of the importance of the watershed. For watershed rehabilitation, we have identified the priority areas. We have uh, GIS thematic maps uh, where we need to uh, undertake watershed rehabilitation. But first we need to conduct social pre preparation and orga organic community organizing to, to introduce the project to the people and uh, engage them in the various parts of the activities. Also, we do a uh, conduct of survey mapping and GPS, meaning these are all geo-referenced and we can locate these projects inside the watershed. We also only plant during the fixed planting window to ensure high survival rate of the planted seedlings. We also do inspe inspection chart mapping of 100% uh, counting of the seedlings to maintain a high uh, survival rate in the areas. In terms of sustainability, uh, as I mentioned, we have con periodic monitoring and growth the measurement of the areas that were planted. We also have geo-referencing and geotagging of these areas. And uh, we have partnerships in the communities. And also as part of our sustainability program, we engage the people in the area to plant the uh, high value crops and intercrop um, agricultural uh, plants in between the plantations so that they would have an interest in maintaining the watershed the planted areas in the watershed. Uh, I would like to discuss with you now the, some of the accomplishments of NPC in managing the nine watersheds that uh, I uh, made mention earlier. So from the time that uh, we have started implementing the universal charge, we already have uh, reforested about 8,584 hectares and we have produced about 10.15 million seedlings as well as the construction of 12,688 cubic meter of structures. Now, um, in terms of its benefits, um, we, have, have, uh, we were successful in increasing the forest cover in the area and that uh, in terms of carbon sequestration, 
uh, we have about sequestered about 60,000 tons of hectare per year of the established plantations, and uh, as well as reduction in soil sedimentation in the area because we need to arrest the erosion and siltation of the reservoirs, as well as increase the biodiversity of species composition because of the establishment of the forested areas, as well as we have also helped in the generation of employment as well as income of the people in the watershed areas. In terms of uh, watershed protection, we already have, we are currently protecting about 140,000 hectares through our strict enforcement of forestry laws. And uh, we have about 10 Bantai watershed and 210 volunteers as deputized forest officers. And we engage the military in, in forest patrol. And in terms of benefits, uh, we have uh, caused the conservation of the existing carbon stock and contributed to climate change mitigation through the sequestration of about 35 million tons of carbon per year in the 140,000 hectares still forested in the watershed. Now, in terms of community-based watershed program, we also have already apprehended a total of 62,000 board feet uh, as part of our uh, forest law enforcement. And uh, we have uh, hired about 40, 43 forest guards. And in terms of the benefits, we have also uh, caused the conservation of existing carbon stock in the area of 140,000 hectares. For our IEC programs, we have conducted about 240 school lectures and uh, the, the, uh, the, it has uh, caused the uh, enhancing of the active participation of the people in the area on watershed management. We have already conducted about uh, 46 activities on social mobilization and uh, production and distribution of 2.14 million seedlings to our host communities and the uh, st stocking of the reservoirs in uh, the watersheds. And lastly, in terms of the livelihood projects and training, we have conducted about 93 livelihood pro projects and trainings. And uh, this has caused the active participation of the various stakeholders, including uh, the women, the IPs, and the other people's, people's organization in the watershed. And uh, you can probably see the pictures in front of you. We have engaged the Dumagats in, um, in, in the fish uh, fish uh, harvesting in the Angat watershed. And the pic the pictures of the durian is in Mindanao, wherein we have already established about 350 hectares of durian plantation. And we also have the basket weaving and the swine uh, dispersal in the areas as well as beekeeping. So ladies and gentlemen, um, I've already imparted to you the, the management uh, the strategies of how NPC manages the watersheds under its jurisdiction. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Noel. Now, um, let's open the floor for questions. Pero meron din po kami inihandang mga tanong para sa inyo, ma'am and sir. <clears throat> so, our first question is for uh, Ma'am Susan. Uh, do the government consider the rainwater harvesting to sustain the need of domestic use of water? Yes, Ma po, Ma'am. Well, in fact, po, dun sa National Water Security Roadmap that we are uh, undergoing, uh, we considered uh, rainwater harvesting as one of the strategies for to augment water supply. Meron na po ba ngayon, ma'am, na ongoing na uh, any uh, private or public uh, partnership na, uh, na makikita natin talagang uh, gumagana na yung ating rainwater harvesting? Well, yung rainwater harvesting kasi matagal na yan. Uh, may law na nga ito actually. Uh, it was uh, a law para sa mga barangay to, to use rainwater, rainwater for uh, water supply. Uh, dun sa mga areas na talagang wala. So it's just a matter of the LGU implementing it. So you can see some, uh, some uh, LGUs. In fact, if you go to Davao, makikita yes. mo may mga rainwater harvesting sila in mga restaurants, sa schools, sa mga buildings. So merong mga iba naman na they're, they're implementing the rainwater harvesting. Kaya lang kailangan nating uh, 
palakasin pa ito. So for the water security roadmap, we probably it would be um, sabi natin you enforce again another uh, stricter policy to to use the rainwater. Of course, oh, po. Tama. Thank you, ma'am. And another question for Sir Jong. How long is the structural capacity or lifespan of dams? Among the dams mentioned earlier, which of them is the oldest in the newly built dam? Okay, so good afternoon ulit. With regards to the structural capacity or lifespan of dams, uh, for a well-maintained uh, and well-managed uh, dam, it can reach uh, 50 to 100 years before the dam structure. But uh, for other components of the dam, such as the gates and the pen stack, uh, the gates uh, around 30 to 50 years and the pen stack is 40 to 60 years. But uh, the life of the dam actually is also associated with uh, the management of uh, uh, the dam itself or the maintenance. Uh, when we say depends, uh, because if during the operation of the dams, uh, there will be uh, breaches or as we see in the news, uh, they, they will be subjected to natural forces. Uh, so that means even it is a new dam, but uh, they are destroyed by, uh, yeah, uh, as I said a while ago, natural forces such as earthquake or uh, floodings. And uh, that occurred uh, earlier than the 50 or 100 years. Then that's the uh uh lifespan of that dam okay but uh as i said earlier for a well maintained and managed dam it can reach up to 100 years and uh with the second question wh what is the oldest and newly built dams uh, uh, uh as i discussed the five dams in luzon the caliraya dam is the oldest which was uh uh, which started its operation in 1953. And uh, the newest is the San Roque Dam, uh, started operating in the year 2003. So, yun po. Thank you, sir. Another follow up question, sir. Um, the Wawa Dam is the second oldest dam after I, I the first actually. Uh, established dam in Luzon. Yung po bang Wawa Dam is uh, before it was operated by NPC or it has a separate institution who operated this dam? Uh, yung Wawa Dam ay hindi po sa uh, NPC yun. Thank you po. And question for Sir Noel. You've mentioned earlier of the lifespan of the watershed naman po. How long it is? What would possibly happen if it reaches its limit, sir? Uh, thank you for that question. Sigur, ang minention ko kanina is the lifespan of the dam, yeah. of the reservoir, and not the watershed. Ah, the watershed. Okay. Uh, the operational capability ng ating mga dams rests kung maganda yung watershed mo, and then um, yung lifespan ng reservoir natin is ma it, it can uh, withstand yung sinasabi ni Sir John kanina na 50 to 100 years. Like for example, yung Angat, the, uh, the uh, Angat Dam is already over 50 years because maganda pa yung watershed in the area. Opo. So, ibig sabihin po, magiging maganda pa rin yung uh, functioning pa rin yung dam depende sa watershed na nagsusupport dito. Tama yes, po, sir? Yes, because pahalimbawa yung siltation is uh, kept at bay, hindi siya ma-fill ma up yung, yung dam natin. So, ma mas maraming water pa rin that can be stored for power generation. And another question, sir, how do we address the illegal lagging happened on the watershed zone? Oh yes, yan ang uh, specially dito sa Angat kasi ang dami-dami pang mga mga 
mga dipterocarps in the area so it's it's really um, talagang gustong gustong puntahan yan it, it it just so happened na maganda yung yung terrain ng yung terrain ng Angat watershed is mahirap siya although we have already identified four hot spots in the area so nagkakaroon lang ng mga timber poaching in the fringes so they they, they cannot enter inside the watershed because it's really very hard to to get inside the, the watershed. So we undertake 24-7 uh, forest patrol in the area, in the hot spots. And then we also have partnerships with the military as well as the people in the community and the, the indigenous people, particularly in, in Angat, para magkaroon kami ng force multiplier in implementing and enforcing forest laws in the watershed. Thank you, Sir Noel. And, uh... Uh, National Power Corporation is always associated with uh, power generation. Sa ngayon ba, uh, sir, um, is the na NPC still functioning as the primary source for electricity? No, after the EPIRA law, yung Electric Power Industry Reform Act, we are out of power generation in the main grid. So wala na kami. We do not uh, construct uh, power plants in the main grid. So nandito na kami sa mga, uh, mga spag areas, yung mga island areas. Uh, so we now provide electricity in the far-flung islands of the Philippines. So mas, mas uh, fulfilling yung work namin kasi uh, doon sa mga islands na ang lalayo, sa mga tawi-tawi na never pa sila nagkakaroon ng electricity, we provide power to these areas. So na, doon na kami nakafocus, yung mga island grids. Uh, opo. Yung sa mas malalayong mga ano? Yes, yung mga, kasa, mga kababayan natin na walang ilaw sa mga isla. Thank you, Sir Noel. And the uh, question, okay, I think sir, uh, sir Jong would like to add Jong? something. Yeah, in addition, <clears throat> sorry, in addition, uh, kung nakita nyo yung presentation ko kanina, yung mga power plants nga ay na-privatized na. Yes. So, dati, ang NPC is the number one power corporation in the Philippines before the Ipira Law. Ngayon, nung nagka-Ipira Law nga, nabenta na yung mga planta. So, what is... Uh, <clears throat> retained in NPC ay yung ano na lang na planta ay yung sa Mindanao yung Agos and Pulangi. So, kumbaga sa ano hindi na major player ngayon si NPC. Thank you Sir John. And a question for NWRB. Uh, what is your comment on the issue that there are environmental or indigenous groups which are against the construction of new dams? Uh, you may also answer it, uh, Sir Jong and Sir Noel. Um, actually, kasi, uh, syempre, if you will construct a dam, mas in position ng NPC kasi sila yung nakakidil sa baba kasi kami for water uh, regulation lang kami. So if they're going to construct dam, of course, they will apply for permit uh, on how they will use the water. So for the environmental, um, uh, of course, we will be uh, um, di, madi displace yung mga uh, indigenous people. So that's why they don't like the dams. Okay. So that's the main, uh, yung kanilang uh, uh, ano doon, ayaw nila ng dam because of they will be displaced. Mawawalan sila ng uh, means of livelihood. So, yun yung mga factors na dapat i-consider sa isang pag-create ng dam. Okay. And um, what are the challenges the water se sector is facing in this time of pandemic? Um, well, uh, when we started with the pandemic last year, so it coincided with the elevation of dam which is very low. Okay. So, yeah, we, we need Ipula water. Kasi no 2019 yeah. talagang yes. ang baba ng ating kailangan, mga... Kailangan, eh, during the time, magsa-summer months yun. So, napakahirap kasi ang baba din ng elevation ng dam noon. So, um, kailangan talaga may mga strategies. So, yung mga technical working group, uh, every week, nag-meeting yan. Okay? So, uh, like what I have said, Nag, uh, we allowed yung parang yung mga monit yung mga wells ng uh, MWSS to augment the water supply 
and then uh, yung strategies na the the farmers will plant uh, not during the summer months kundi when it rains na so they and like adjust din sila ma'am ng farming season okay yes that's right so pinarioritize natin yung uh, metro manila for drinking kasi uh, Although nagsara yung mga offices ng uh, ng uh, three months, nag-lockdown. Yes, so, also. household, syempre, malakas ang gamit ng tubig. And then, hmm. also, ano, taking bath during the dry season, three times. So, kailangan um, talagang masustain natin. So, yun yung mga strategies noon. Okay? Well, uh, well, augmentation through well. Inopen natin yung mga well. And then, yung strategy nga na prolonging the farm farmers. And then, uh, minaximize din natin yung uh, sinabi natin na mag-conserve, mga IEC natin. Uh, IEC campaign natin, mag-conserve ng water. So, uh, ano pa ba yung mga strategies nun? Okay. So, yun, yung binalans. Kasi yung NWRB with the help of the TWG and yung, uh, yung, ano to, yung pag-asa. So, we simulate, we simulate kung kailan ulan. So kung makikita mo uh, may uulan so may pag-asang tumaas yung dam so ma-augment natin yung water supply. And then truly naman by the end of the 2020 talagang puro bagyo <laughs> naman. So oh. mukha naman ng flooding. Oh. Kaya ang dali naman niya nag-replenish nung last yes. quarter. Oh, oh. Mm. Right. So, kasi, beginning, kasi, beginning ng year ng 2021, medyo 213, 212 oh, oh. yung level ng dam. Which mm. pag ganun kasi ang beginning ng dam elevation sa anggat, masusustain niya yung water supply for Metro Manila and then the irrigation supply for the farmers. And even mm. power generation. I guess Ma'am Susan, maganda yung outlook natin for 2021. Ano? Kasi magandang tubig natin sa anggat ngayon. Tsaka okay. mamataas siya. Kasi nung pandemic, ang taas ng demand ng water kasi lahat nasa bahay. Eh, no? yes, Opo. Po. Yung mga tao mostly talagang nasa bahay. Kaya mas malaki rin ang konsumo ng tubig. Opo. Uh, last question, sir. Since uh, na, ano, napahapyawan nga natin yung uh, uh, pagtaas ng level ng dam. What is your comment on the flooding happened during the last quarter of 2020 in Luzon area? Meron ba tong kinalaman sa mga dam natin na yung spilling level nito? Okay, uh, so kuna muna no. Uh, on the part of NPC yung flooding sa Luzon na uh, binabanggit nila is uh, meron sa Cagayan. Okay? Meron sa Marikina. Meron yes. sa Bulacan. So what uh, <clears throat> I can talk about uh, on the part of NPC ay dito sa Bulacan lang. Okay. So sa Bulacan, when we started our uh, spilling or when we opened our gates, ay hindi kami sumabay sa bugso ng tubig sa downstream ng Bulacan. So, meaning, nung nag-release kami ng tubig at may mga propagation time kasi yan na sinasabi kung kailan ang dating nung tubig sa bawat lugar. And before we started our op uh, operation ng spilling, Uh, lahat ng mga notices and uh, advices sa mga downstream communities or doon sa mga maapektuhan ay base sa ating uh, protocol ginawa. So sabi ko nga kanina nung nag-start na kami mag-open ng gates, eh, yung elevation ng tubig naman doon sa downstream ay uh, nag-uumpisa ng bumaba. So nung dumating yung tubig galing sa anggat ay wala na siyang masyadong effect sa pagtaas pa ng elevation ng tubig dun sa mga areas kung saan siya dumadaloy. So yun po ang nangyari nung uh, 2020 na yung sa Ulysses na bagyo. Opo. Mm -hmm. 
So, okay. Kay, siguro that also impresses the, the need for uh, good watershed management. Kasi kung maganda yung forest cover ng watershed mo, ma, medyo matetemper niya. Halimbawa, marami man siyang ulan na, na dumating doon sa area. At least ma, matetemper niya yung pagdaloy uh, ng ulan from the watershed to the reservoir. Y- yun yung maganda sana na, na nangyayari. Kaya nga, we're... we're uh, talagang we're striving very hard na yung mga watersheds natin, yung lalo yung under sa NPC, ay ma-restore natin yung mga areas na open. Kasi siya yung magsaserve as cushion dun sa pagdating oh, ng malaking ulan. Na pag maganda hindi siya ang talaga, forest area, yan, yes. mas maraming... Ma-absorb niya muna, then oh, instead of bago just... Bago pumunta sa ano, the reservoir. Yeah, uh-huh. Yung tinatawag na absorptive capacity ng watershed natin. Yes. Um, any final words, sir? Dagdagan ko lang po, ma'am. Yun naman pong ginagawa ngayon ng uh, uh, NIA, NWRB, Pag-asa. Uh, t- inaaral po yung dam protocol kasi may mga protocol sa dam. So parang ma- matagal na kasi. Lalo sa hanggat po, 2010 pa yung dam protocol natin. At ah, so marami ng kailangan. So kailangan nire-revisa po ngayon. They're visit, re- reviewing it to come up with yung most recent na appropriate para po pa, para during this time na magkaroon ng mga ganyang releases or ano mga protocols, eh, ma- ma-update po natin yung public. So, i-update din po natin yung mga dam protocols. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am Susan, actually, tama kayo. But it is not only sa hanggat kung hindi lahat ng ating mga dams. Uh, we are now in the process of reviewing our protocol na. Tama. Tama po. With uh, Nia din po, nagpatawag po sila yes. ng committee. Yes. Yeah, last week, di ba? Nag, uh, nag-meeting tayo last week. And then kahapon din sa NWRB ulit na meeting na banggit yan. Hey, uh, for my part, ako ay agree with the last statement ni Ma'am Susan na lahat ng ito is all, is a shared responsibility. Diba? Yes. Sabi nga ni Ma'am Susan, yung conservation of water, tayo yan lahat ng mga tao. Ganon din sa watershed management. We, we should have a shared responsibility in protecting the watersheds na that we have kasi ito yung lifeblood na maraming forest resources na binibigay ang ating watersheds at kung maganda ang condition nito patuloy lang sustained yung yung ating uh, production of resources kaya i'm also inviting the our viewers kung gusto niyo mag-participate in in uh, kung gusto niyo mag-tree planting doon sa ating mga watershed oh, areas tree planting very, uh, yes we are, we are, we are very much welcome kasi we really, we really need the hands uh, to be able to kasi marami kami, sabi ko nga sa inyo, 69,000 hectares pa yung aming dapat i- Opo, tapos konti lang staff yeah, ng so NPC. Mas, mas maganda na shared responsibility in in uh, doing your share in uh, restoring our watersheds to a uh, productive condition. Thank you. Any final word for from our speakers for the Filipino, especially the youth? Apo. When it comes to uh, conservation of watershed and the uh, water supply. Uh, ladies first ulit. <laughs> Susan muna. Okay po. So uh, in terms of water, so water sector, so uh, number one is uh, where uh, sinusulong natin yung water conservation. Patuloy pa rin yan kay maraming tubig kay kokonti ang tubig, still sinusulong natin yung water conservation. And uh, probably we can start with water demand management later on kasi uh, ito yung nakikita nating solusyon. Yung dam kasi creation of a dam is a long term. So ito yung mga short term strategies natin, uh, water demand management. Like uh, um, ang ano to ang Singapore walang resources but they they were able to manage the resources. So ito yung tinitignan nating mga mga Uh, example na pwede nating ipagawa dito sa Pilipinas. Mm-hmm. Yes, okay. So it's water demand management, water conservation. And yes, of course, water is a shared responsibility. Thank you, Ma'am Susan. And uh, Sir John? Yeah, uh, uh, gusto kong magpasalamat sa opportunity na makapagsalita sa inyo at sa audience natin. And 
Sinasabi nga natin as uh, ganun din kay Ma'am Susan at kay Sir Noel, anything kung poorly managed yan, kay watershed, kay dams o kung ano man yung mga katulad sa mga wells natin, ganun, is maski na sinabi natin na ganito siya katagal, supposed to be mag-exist o ano, kung poorly managed yan, eh talagang ang lifespan ay ikli. So sabi nga ni Ma'am Susan is lahat ng mga yan, kung gusto nating mapahaba ang lifespan ng maski anuman is a shared responsibility nga. Yun lamang po and uh, maraming salamat. Finally, yes, thank, Sir Noel. Uh, hey, thank you for inviting us. Uh, talagang marami kaming IEC na kinoconduct even in the communities that we serve para sa ganon they will be uh, aware of their responsibilities in managing the the watersheds that we have kasi sabi nga natin we're living isang mundo natin yung earth so dapat we do our share we do our, yung mga small mga maliliit na bagay na pwede nating maitulong to to be able to conserve and uh, the resources of Mother Earth. Gawin natin yun, mga kasama. Maraming salamat. Uh, very nice uh, words from you, our speakers. And ang lesson natin for today is water is a shared responsibility. Thank you so much to our speakers. And to end up our webinar, may I call on the Shrine Curator of the Museo El Deposito, Mr. Junel Birabusa. All right, so good afternoon to everyone. Again, we would like to thank all our viewers uh, who participated in our Facebook live stream. Uh, we would like to thank as well our speakers from the National Water Resources Board and the National Power Corporation. Of course, uh, the, our activity will not be possible without the approval of our main institution, the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, headed by our chairman, Dr. Rene Escalante, Executive Director of the Instituto Aguilar, our Deputy Executive Director for Administration, Ms. Carminda Revolo, of course, the one who joined us for the opening remarks, uh, Mr. Alvin Alcid, the OIC for the Deputy Executive Director for uh, Programs and Projects. Sir, thank you very much for joining us. And of course, last but not least, we would like to thank our colleagues from our division, the Historic Sites and Education Division, headed by our Chief, Ms. Gina C. Batuhan, our Supervising Historic Sites Development Officer, Mr. Brian Paraiso, and of course, our colleagues from the 27 Museums of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. I hope that in this webinar, you have learned a lot. And we are, uh, like what the speaker said, we all have a shared responsibility in sustaining a clean water for the future generation. Yun lamang po at maraming salamat. And uh, let me take this opportunity, of course, uh, to, uh, to plug our programs in the coming months. So for February, we'll be having the Tubig at Tula sa Daloy na Mga Salita. So we will have a online poem writing challenge. So the very main theme is Tubig at Pag-ibig. So for the details about this uh, online poem writing challenge, you may visit our official Facebook page at uh, www.facebook.com slash Museo El Deposito. So the deadline for submission for the online poem challenge is on February 11, 2021. So please visit our official Facebook page to see the guidelines for the said poem. And of course, we would like every uh, we would like to invite everyone to follow the events for one of the biggest and historic uh, events in the country this year, 2021, the 500 years, uh, the Quincentennial Commemoration of the Philippines, headed by the National Quincentennial Committee. So please follow their official Facebook page at uh, www.facebook.com slash NQC2021 or you may visit uh, their website and other pages like YouTube and Spotify. Uh, for this year, uh, a lot of events are stored for the celebration of the Quincentennial Commemoration which uh, includes the 500 uh, years of circumnavigation of the world and the 500 years of the victory of Mactan. So again, please, uh, we invite everyone to participate in the activities of the 500 years commemoration in the Philippines with the team Victory and Humanity. Thank you. This guy. Can you mute, Miss Guy? 
Ayan. This ends our program for this afternoon. Thank you for joining us and see you again to our next webinar. Goodbye and good afternoon.